when he came down the golden escalator and announced his bid for the presidency, one of the first things he says, well, I'm going to build a wall. And all of us laughed. Well, that was then. This is now. He is the Republican candidate. This is election night. And he's got a shot. Come on in. Larry Elder, Salem, nationally syndicated <laughs> radio host. I bet, w were you laughing back then, just like I was? Because I didn't take that candidacy seriously. Did you? I, I did not. I was one of those who predicted he wouldn't uh, run, and if he did, he'd do it for a few months, uh, get his uh, tail kicked in by the media, uh, and then get out having enhanced his brand. I had no blooming idea he'd be, last, he'd be the last man standing. I don't well, think he did either. <laughs> but we have to say that if you look at the Electoral College map, he's got a very tough row to hoe for the rest of this evening. He's got to win three key states, and then he's got to pick right. off one of eight that he's got a flip. I think you'd agree, Larry, this is a very tough electoral college map for him to get to the presidency. It is. To use a baseball analogy, he'd have to pitch a complete game shutout. He's got to get all the Romney states, all the swing states, and then steal a Wisconsin, a Minnesota, a Michigan, a Pennsylvania. Uh, that'll be a tough, tough haul. But you don't think it's impossible? I mean, from your no. reading, you're on the air every single day looking at this kind of thing. What do you think? Is it, is it out of the question or what? Not out of the question at all. Uh, he looks like he's strong in, in North Carolina. Looks like he may very well uh, win Ohio. Florida is going to be difficult. Uh, I think it would have helped had James Comey not done another 180 uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, the momentum was going in Donald Trump's uh, favor, and that seemed to stop it. So uh, again, uh, it's it's a real tough uh, tough haul. He will do better than Mitt Romney. It looks like he's going to do better than Mitt Romney with black voters. Maybe double the uh, percentage of black voters that, that Mitt Romney got, if not triple it. Uh, that's that's not Whoa. small potatoes. Hold on a second. Second, Larry, you think he, he could possibly double or even triple the black vote for Donald Trump? That would be putting him somewhere around 15 to 20 percent. You think he'll get that? Well, that yeah, if he doubled it, it's around 8 uh, percent. It's hard to do less than 4 or 5 percent, which is what the Republicans have done the last several election cycles. And he's gone down to the inner city, talked about jobs, talked about uh, illegal immigration, putting downward pressure uh, and taking jobs from uh, inner city people. And he's talked about something that inner city parents really, really want, Stuart, and that's choice in schools. Uh, yeah. The kids that are in the inner city are trapped in the worst public schools, the worst teachers, the worst administrators, and a lot of inner city parents want an option out, and Donald Trump is offering that, and the Democratic Party is wedded to the teachers union, which is adamantly opposed to vouchers, so that seemed to me to be a sweet spot. I think it's his key issue amongst the black vote, that is, school choice, go for it. I think so. Um, marijuana, now you're in California. Uh, right. There's a ballot. To, <laughs> um, I have to raise the issue, for heaven's sake. It, it's in California. Um, you know, they, they might make it legal to smoke uh, right. marijuana legally, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think it's going to pass in California? Because if it does, Larry, it spreads all over the country, doesn't it? Well, I, I do think so. California already legalized it for medicinal purposes. I'm surprised, frankly, given how liberal the state is, it's taken so long. I think the initiative is going to pass, and it will have an effect on the rest of the country. Uh, one of the big reasons, of course, is the uh, infusion of taxes. One of the concerns is whether or not marijuana is a so-called gateway drug, and it will induce other people to do harder stuff. But I think, overall, most people feel that it's a choice issue. Uh, it shouldn't be a Schedule One drug, drug, which means no known uh, medical value and highly addictive. Neither really is, is quite true, and so I think it's going to pass. Now, I don't know your politics. I know you're a conservative. I know you believe in right. free markets primarily, but I don't know your politics on marijuana. You for it or against it, legalization? I, I'm for freedom. I, I personally uh, am not in favor of, of doing drugs, but I think that if you as an individual want to do something that's damaging to your body, as long as you're not hurting somebody else, that's your call. I'm a libertarian, small l libertarian. Do you extend that to other drugs? I do. I, I really do. I, I think when you consider about the, the crime that's uh, committed by people robbing and maiming and stealing to support a drug habit, that is a lot more expensive than it would be if it was done by Philip Morris as opposed to the Carly Cartel. I think on, on par, the, uh, the equities outweigh the disadvantages. I really do. You're quite a radical, aren't you? I didn't realize. I am a radical. Yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> Revolutionary I am a radical. in California. You don't know what else I want, I think. Mr. Elder, it was a pleasure as we go through this election day. Thanks for being with us, sir. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right.